Hey guys, how's it going? Jay here once again with another installation walkthrough. You know, Ubuntu 20.04 was released today, and I'm really excited to get the final version installed on this machine. But before I get to my review and all that, that's going to happen later today, what I wanted to do was, well, show you guys the installation procedure. And another thing I wanted to do was show you guys my new studio, which is currently a work in progress, but I think it's coming along just nicely. And this video also serves as the first test of this new studio. So given that this is a new studio, pardon the dust, the audio quality, the lighting, video quality, basically nothing is final yet. I'll see how this video turns out, and then I'll determine what kind of tunings or changes, tweaks, or whatever I need to make. But anyway, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get Ubuntu 20.04 installed on this ThinkPad T480S laptop right now. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter. F12, this varies from one laptop to another, but I'm basically wanting to get to the boot screen. And here it is. So I guess I need to clean up my EFI list here, don't I? But anyway, I wanna go ahead and boot from the flash drive. And I'll let this boot. And I have a video on my channel already that will walk you through the creation of a bootable flash drive for the purposes of installing Linux. So go ahead and check that out if you haven't already seen the process. So when you first start up, this is the screen that you're going to see. And before I go any further, I just wanna mention that um, basically since this is an installation walkthrough video, I'm going to walk through the entire process, but if you've already seen this process before, well, um, I'm following the same format this time around, but I always wanna make sure that I have the latest and greatest videos for the installation process so you can see what this process actually looks like. But the first thing you always wanna do is go ahead and try Ubuntu if you haven't already tried it on your particular piece of hardware. This will give you a chance to demo the distribution before you install it. And here we are presented with the default Ubuntu 2004 desktop. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and make sure you are connected to the internet if you have a cable connected, you're probably all set. If you need Wi-Fi, you simply select your network as I'm doing here. Then you put in your super secret password. And it's already added my printer. How awesome is that? We see that it is connected. This lit up right here. It's colored white for the Wi-Fi icon. It is connected to my SSID. And then I can open up a browser and just go to a website, make sure that internet browsing works. Maybe go to YouTube, watch some videos, which will also allow you to test the audio, things like that. Just make sure everything works exactly as you would expect it to. And if it, everything does work, then we go ahead and proceed to install, which is this icon right here, install Ubuntu 2004. I'll double click on that. And then we'll go ahead and go through the installation process. So the first thing it's asking is basically what language you would like for the installation process. I'll leave mine as the default. For the keyboard layout, it defaults in my case to English US, but if yours is something other than that, go ahead and select it. And then after that, you can go ahead and just start typing here to test it to make sure that it works properly. And then I'll continue. Now we have an option of a normal installation or a minimal installation. Now I'm going to choose the normal installation. Minimal installation is for intermediate users or higher that just wants basically, you know, they don't want a whole lot of default software. They want it to be more clean. You still get a web browser and some other things, but they will omit some of the software if you want something a bit lighter. Download updates while installing Ubuntu. I will uncheck that. I think you should probably keep that checked. There's no reason not to download updates to save yourself the uh, hassle of having to do some of that later. And I do recommend that you install the third-party software because that's just going to increase the compatibility of your hardware. 
Now, I'm not going to select either of these because that, that's just going to lengthen the recording time in my case, but in your case, I do recommend that you check basically both of these boxes here. So I'll go ahead and continue. Now, in my case, I'm going to erase the disk and install Ubuntu. Uh, this will erase the disk just as it says. It'll destroy all your pictures, saved games, I mean, everything. I'm assuming before we continue that you've already backed up everything. I don't even have anything on this laptop that I really care about. We do have some advanced features here if you want to. You can set up LVM. I have a video on LVM that is coming very, very soon that you should check out. And as soon as it's out, I'll put a card right here. And we also have an experimental feature here for ZFS. I'm going to choose that option. It is an experimental option. I don't recommend that everybody do that because it does increase memory usage. Just keep that in mind. So if you have a laptop or desktop or whatever you have and you don't have a ton of memory here, you probably don't want to choose this option. I would say in my personal opinion, if you have 16 gigs of RAM or higher, you could probably get away with this. If you have less than that, you probably don't want to. Some people will disagree with me. That's not an official metric, just a suggestion. So I'll go ahead and click OK. I have 24 gigs of RAM on this laptop here, so I should be more than fine for this. And then I'll click Install. And then it's just confirming. So, yep, let's go ahead. And then what we do at this point is select our location. We can click on the map to get this little red dot closer to where we are geographically. So Detroit, close enough for me. And this will set your time zone and things like that. Then you can just fill out the user information. I'm just going to keep mine simple here. I name all of my computers after Final Fantasy VI Espers. So this laptop is named Crusader, if you were curious where that comes from. It says the name is already on the network. is only because I have a DHCP reservation for this laptop. That's no problem. And then I just type a password, whatever I want my password to be. And then I'll click continue. And now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and let it finish. It's installing right here in the background. I can continue to use this in live mode. And then when it's done, I simply restart. So let's give this a moment to finish. All right, so at this point, the installation is complete. We can either continue to use live mode to continue to test it, but none of the changes that we make in live mode will be retained. So if we want a permanent install to work with, we need to restart. So I'll click on that right now. And then it basically lets us know that we are clear to remove the flash drive. Press enter and we should be good to go. And now that we are logged in to our new Ubuntu desktop installation, we get this nifty menu right here, which gives us some online services that we can sign into that'll activate various features and syncing and things like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and skip that for now. Live Patch is a really awesome service. It's free for a couple of machines. You do have to pay for it if you have a certain number of installations. But I believe if you have three, you're good, three or less. This will basically install some of the security updates automatically. And I literally recommend everybody do this. It's beyond the scope of my video right now to go ahead and walk you through that process. But it is something that I recommend everyone take advantage of. Now here we can help improve Ubuntu. I'm going to go ahead and send this along. There's no reason not to do this. We get Ubuntu for free, so we may as well help the developers. And we can also show the first report right here if we're curious about what type of information it's actually going to send along. And it's information about this particular laptop that I'm running this on, and that's fine. I'll go ahead and send that along to them. So I'll leave it checked right here. But if you don't want to do that, no problem. You just click on the second option here to say no. Location services for, you know, basically applications that utilize geographic locations. This is off by default. You could turn this on if that's something that you want to benefit from. And then we have some 
applications right here. These are some applications that a lot of people end up installing. Definitely not a, an extensive list of the software that's available, but it is pretty cool to give you a quick access page or whatever you want to call this to some applications that might benefit you. And then you can open Ubuntu software by clicking right here. It's also here on the left side where you can get even more software for your installation. So I'll click done. And you know what? We're all set. We have a fresh installation of Ubuntu 2004 ready to go, ready to do our bidding. That's awesome. So there you go. The installation is all set. Ubuntu 2004 is installed on my laptop. I will have a full review today on my channel, so definitely subscribe if you haven't already done that. Make sure you click the like button if you like this video because that lets YouTube know that you want to see more Linux content just like this. So stay tuned. I'll be back very soon for the official review. See you there.